What a difference. Oh, my God, man. Look at that. Got one fan installed, man. Bigger fan motors. I think it's good. Good, man. What you think, Chris? It's, it's looking nice under there. Hey, man, y'all heard him, man. So next thing next. But that's what I'm talking about. I'm satisfied, you two. You two. I've been having some overheating issues with my LS swap, but I put them all behind me. Once and for all, you can cause a lot of engine damage due to overheating, and it can cost you a lot of money to get it fixed. That's why today, YouTube, I want to share with you what my problem was, how to identify the problem, and exactly what you need to do to get it fixed. That way, your LS swap ain't overheating. But before we do that, I want to ask you a question. How would you like to know how to do a LS swap in an old school car that run like this? LS3 swap. Looking at almost 600 horsepower. We ain't put it on a dyno yet, YouTube. We did our own wiring. We show y'all how to do that, YouTube, step by step. We did our own fuel system. We show y'all how to do that as well, step by step, YouTube. Everything you need to know, LS Swap, baby. As easy as you possibly can, as inexpensively as you possibly can, without sacrificing quality or performance. Let Chevy R Us help you. Do your LS swap, YouTube. We a family, man. We gonna do this thing together. Make sure you click that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on your notification bell. That way you see all the videos when we post them. And I need for you to drop me a comment in the comment section and say I'm riding with Chevy's R Us, Tone. Y'all ready? Let's get it. All right, YouTube. And we back out here again, man. Hey, y'all already know what time it is, man. We got these 72 Impala LS Swap pulled out the garage. For those of y'all that's new to the channel, we just got finished uh, doing an LS swap and we've been having some uh, overheating problems. And today we're going to be upgrading the electric radiator cooling fans on our LS swap cooling system in hopes will help eliminate your LS swap overheating for good. But before we do the replacement, we're actually going to test the current fans on the car, and we're going to make sure we got enough air coming through the radiator to keep the engine cool. And, and that way, if you suspect this to be your problem, uh, you'll know exactly how to test and make sure you got enough air coming through your radiator to keep your LS swap running cool. And then after we install the upgraded electric cooling fans we're going to measure it again to see how much of a difference and how much more air the upgraded fans are pulling through the radiator now before you go changing out your electric cooling fans cover all your other bases and make sure that you got let me show you, you want to make sure your ls steam ports uh, that you see right here are hooked up and properly routed and plumbed back into your LS swap cooling system, as you see right here. And you also want to make sure you do the LS swap cooling system bleed procedure or the LS swap bleed cooling system process to take all the air out of the system. Those two things alone will help eliminate 
your LS swap overheating. So if you have not done those two things, I highly advise you click that link in the top right corner and check out the LS swap cooling system playlist. I explain in detail every step of the way how to properly route your steam lines and plumb them back into your LS swap cooling system and how to get all of the air out of your LS swap cooling system. So make sure you do those two things first before you go out spending unnecessary money on some upgraded electric cooling fans. First things first, uh, let me show you how to measure the amount of air that your existing electronic fans is drawing through your radiator. All right, so what I'm going to do is, let me show y'all this right here, man. All right, y'all, what you're looking at is a uh, a digital anometer. And uh, what it does, it measures the wind speed and the wind temperature and stuff like that. This is just a little tool, man, about 30 bucks. You can get this off of Amazon or something like that. But it'll measure the amount of air that's blowing out your radiator. Whenever you're measuring the amount of CFM that your electronic radiator fans can pull through your radiator. First thing you want to do, uh, you got this little anometer right here, man. I'm just going to power this guy on. And it got different functions. It got velocity, uh, area, and flow is what we want. We want to measure the flow. And it measured in CMS right now. So we want to change the unit to not to CMM, but we want to change the unit to CFM. Function is flow, and the unit is CFM. Uh, what we can do now is crank the engine up, let the engine get into operating temperature, and then after that, we'll stick this down there, boom, like that. And once we get a good read, we'll press the hold button. Because we can't see the numbers like that, but when we press the hold button and take it back out, you can see the number. Got to wait till the engine get the operating temperature so the fans can cut on. There it go, there it go. Y'all see that? 1,034 CFM. Twelve hundred CFM. So now that we know fan number one is only pulling like eleven hundred CFM, and we know that fan number two is pulling about twelve hundred CFM. So you do the math. Eleven hundred plus twelve hundred is only 2300 2300 cfm now i don't know if you got the opportunity to watch the last video but in the last video we talked about the amount of cfm that's required for cooling off a four-cylinder engine a six-cylinder engine a small v8 engine and 2300 cfm that's not even enough to cool a v6 I think it takes 2,500 CFM to keep a V6 cool. And it takes 2,800 CFM to keep a small V8 cool, like a 305 or a 4.9 liter V8 or a 3.9 liter V8, uh, something like that. You know what I'm saying? So this is nowhere near enough CFM to keep this LS3 6.2 liter cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see what the best way we can change these fans out. We're going to try to do it without draining the radiator. But if we have to drain the radiator, then we will. Uh, otherwise, you know what I'm saying, we'll uh, just swap them out. So we'll be back in a minute. YouTube, I got one fan installed, man. I'm just going to show you the difference, man. Look at that. 
Now y'all see how far that fan pokes out. You know what I'm saying? It's got a very, uh, a, a much stronger uh, motor. It'll pull more air. See how far that thing pokes out? You come around here. Come around here and see the difference. Move that out of the way. You see that? Man, look at that, man. Look how big that motor is on the right side versus the one on the left side. Yeah, bigger motor. Uh, that bigger motor should pull a lot more air. Big difference. Now, these larger cooling fans, they have a higher wattage. Uh, I think they draw like 180 watts or something like that. And they also will draw more amps. You know what I'm saying? Because they pull in more power and current from your car's charging system. So we got to make sure that we have the recommended right relays. And we also need to make sure we have the recommended right fuse size and also the right recommended wire gauge. We don't need our wire gauge to be too small. Otherwise, it ain't going to allow it to draw enough current and your, it ain't going to keep your car cool like it's supposed to. And all of that got to be right because we don't want to burn up nothing or we don't want to tear up nothing on your car. But we don't worry about all that right now. We're going to cover all of that a little bit later on in the video. So y'all stay right there with me. All right, you two. I got these new fans all hooked up. As y'all can see, man, uh, Hey man, they fit in there perfectly. You know what I'm saying? You, the only difference is, is these motors stick out like three times more. Now that we got both cooling fans installed, got them wired up, we'll talk about wiring in a minute. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to crank it up and we're going to let it get to operating temperature. And then we're going to take the CFM measurement to see how much of a difference these upgraded cooling fans make versus the older, less powerful cooling fans that we had installed before. All right? And then after that, uh, I'll break all the wiring down to you. All right? Let's get it. All right, let me crank this thing up, you two. Look at that, y'all. 1594. 1695 on the second one, y'all. So now that we tested the amount of air that's coming through the radiator, uh, with the upgraded electric cooling fan, we can actually see, man, that these upgraded cooling fans draw in quite a bit more air. The upgraded electric cooling fans looks like they draw in a total of about 3,300 CFM, which is significantly higher than the cooling fans that we replaced. They brought in about 2,200 CFM. So 2,200 versus 3,300. That's a big difference, man. That's a lot more CFM. And what does that mean? It's pulling in a lot more air. And then what does that mean? That means that it's going to keep your engine running cool. It's going to keep your LS swap from overheating. You know what I'm saying? Because all this counts, y'all. It's significantly better. Now, I will say this. The manufacturer or the, the company that I got the fans from, they said that each one of those fans will pull in at least 2,000 plus CFM. Does that actually happen? Uh, as of right now, they're not pulling in 2000 CFM is significantly higher, but it's not pulling in what the company says that it's supposed to pull in. 
They don't pull in that much. But yeah, it's higher. To cool off a small V8, it takes about 2,800 CFM. Uh, anywhere from 2,800 up to 5,000 CFM for a larger V8. So now that we got that established, let's talk about wiring. What kind of wiring do you need so that you don't tear your car up, so you don't burn up nothing, you don't burn up no wires and blow fuses and pot relays and do all that? These specific fans they draw about 180 watts. And so if you take the wattage and divide it by the voltage, which is 12 volts, you know, a car is 12 volts. You take 180 divided by 12, you get 15, which means is 15 amps is the amount of current that it's going to draw. And so uh, you need a relay that's at least 15 amps. But I have 30 amp relays installed on each one of my fans. And so I'm covered there. Uh, the, the recommendation or the manufacturer said that it would only draw like 12.5 amps or something like that. But, you know, hey, we ain't going off that, man. We're going to do the math. So what you need uh, for a 2000 plus CFM fan so let's get this straight you need to run two 30 amp relays okay for a, a fan that draws 2000 plus cfm you need at least a 30 amp relay and if you got two fans you need two 30 amp relays and then also what you need is you need a 40 amp fuse for each relay you need a 40 amp fuse. Make sure y'all get that. Otherwise, you're going to be popping fuses and you might burn up some. So make sure y'all, make sure y'all do that. As far as the wire size is concerned, make sure you get at least a 10 gauge wire to supply power to your fans and do all your wiring with 10 gauge wire. You know, not 12 gauge is a little smaller. You might be okay with 12 gauge, but use the thicker stuff, man. Because the thicker stuff, if, if your wiring is too small, uh, your wires are going to heat up. And you might even burn out a wire or something like that. So you got to make sure you got the proper wiring in place. And if your wiring is too small on a hot summer day, and your cooling fans are running and they trying to draw power, they may not be able to get enough current because your wiring is too small and your car going to overheat, man. Yeah, real talk. Because your fans can't get the amount of power that they need and they ain't going to turn over as fast and they ain't going to cool off your car like they could be cooling off your car. So... Man, y'all make sure that y'all do that, man. All right? Easy peasy, man. And so on the next video, we're going to walk over exactly how to wire up your electric cooling fans, the relays, every connection, man. So y'all look forward to that, man. And also, in upcoming video, man, we're going to be showing you how to do a, a radiator pressurized test to check your system for leaks, you know what I'm saying? And also, man, I'm going to be driving this bad boy around, man. And I'm going to update y'all and let y'all know how it's doing. And so y'all look forward to that, man. If I can help save you some money, if I can help save you some frustration and help save you some time, that's what I'm going to do. So y'all keep that in mind, man. I've been battling this issue and I never questioned it, not one bit. Because I've learned so much throughout this process. And now I'm stronger. And now I can bless you all with this knowledge and this information that God has allowed for me to learn, man. If this is your first time on the channel and you like learning about stuff like this. And you like learning how to do a LS swap. Like the one you see in this 72 convertible Impala. The most inexpensive cost-effective way you can 
without sacrificing quality or performance, hey, y'all make sure y'all go ahead and click that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell, and drop me a comment. Let me know what kind of old school car you working on or what kind of car your heart desires and what kind of LS swap you want to do. Let Chevy Zarus help you do your LS swap. YouTube, YouTube!